Well, hi there. This is it. Not this. This is probably the most impressive and intimidating lizard in the world. Now, it isn't the biggest. That title is held by the Komodo dragon. And I'm not going to tell you that this lizard, the crocodile monitor, is more impressive. I'm just going to show you a picture of a Komodo dragon skull. And then I'm going to show you a picture of a crocodile monitor skull. A Burmese python is bigger than a mamba, but I think we both know which one is more hardcore. Is the crocodile monitor more hardcore than the Komodo dragon? I'll let you decide. It's definitely the most hardcore lizard I have ever been around. Hopefully we can do a video on Komodo dragons sometime soon so we can really tease that one out. But a little while back, I went to Florida with Dave Kaufman. Until this trip, I had never been around crocodile monitors. But on this trip, it seemed like everybody and their dog had a crocodile monitor. I got to go in with Lagatha at Camp Kennan. And where I really got to spend some serious time with these incredible animals was at Tom Crutchfield's. Tom has put an incredible amount of time and has utilized his extensive experience over decades working with lizards to build an incredible relationship of trust and mutual understanding with these intimidating super lizards. And so it seemed like the perfect opportunity to interact with these lizards, crocodile monitors. But I'll be honest, they were far more dangerous than I'd anticipated. I haven't built a relationship with these animals. And I will say that they deserved my complete attention while I was in their presence. And for that reason, I have actually returned home to consider these lizards as pets. And so, now that we're back here, in the safety of our studio, with this being the most dangerous monitor in my presence, I would like to evaluate whether or not the crocodile monitor is a good pet. And is it the best pet lizard for you? And if you're watching this video to find out, the answer is no. <laughs> This is the first and maybe only lizard that we have ever covered that I think could easily kill a human being. But they are incredible, intelligent, impressive, legendary lizards that are appropriate for a select few keepers. So let's score them based on our five categories, just for fun. I mean, we scored King Cobras. Is this more unreasonable than that? That wasn't rhetorical. I really would like to know what you think. But anyway, those five categories are, as always, Handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the crocodile monitor a score of one out of five. When evaluating a lizard for handleability, I usually am not factoring in how likely it is to kill you. Gila monsters aren't going to kill you. The angry Argus monitor at chest height with you pinned between a desk and a wall isn't going to kill you. Your Nile monitor isn't going to kill you. We're talking stitches, extreme pain, nerve and tendon damage, but not death. But did you see those teeth? Did you see them? They made the Komodo dragon's teeth look cute. I've long noticed that the croc monitor has a more bulbous snout than a Komodo. It turns out that it has to curve like that to make room for all those daggers. Tom was bitten a few years ago and the damage to his hand was terrifying. That wasn't even a bad bite. These monitors are climbers. If you hold one, it's going to climb on you like a tree. Those claws aren't going to be fun. But if it would be to bite you on the neck or somewhere else with a major artery, well, there will be no antivenom for that. To be fair, these animals are very smart. As more of them are bred in captivity and socialized from a young age, it will probably be possible to have a great relationship with these animals. Of course, that's also true of bears and tigers. Oh my. They also have a tail, which can become a very effective weapon. Again, they have a lot that can hurt you, but it is going to be those teeth that could kill you. And if we're talking about wild-caught adults, a score of one is too generous. When I went to Tom's, I was planning to hold them and talk about them like I'm doing right now with this Aki. I quickly decided that I was out of my league. Bravery turns into stupidity when you don't know your own limitations. I know mine. I would want a lot of experience with these incredible animals before I would even consider such a thing. I'd like to take just a moment to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon, who actually are the ones that sent me to Florida so that we could film this video and actually a whole lot of other stinking rad videos while I was down there. That wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Thank you so much. And if you enjoy this content, please consider checking out our Patreon. It also has a lot of really rad features that you would enjoy as a fan of this channel. When it comes to care, we give the Crocodile Monitor a score of one out of five. I'm gonna start with the enclosure. It should be huge, colossal, like a room in your house. 
And this is a room that you need to keep extremely warm. It also needs a very hot basking spot and UVB. Croc monitors are largely arboreal, so if this room can include some trees, that would be spectacular. It definitely needs large structures upon which the monitor can climb. Not only does this room need to be hot, but it also needs to be humid. This can be achieved with a large pond, as many like to soak, deep substrate that doesn't mold, and frequent misting. If you think you're going to miss this by hand, you're going to end up looking like Popeye. A large misting system is probably the best. That's also important because not all of them will soak or drink from a bowl. Some of them will want to drink droplets like a chameleon. When it comes to food, a diet of whole vertebrate and invertebrate prey is the best. Variety will be the key. They will eat birds, mammals, fish, reptiles, really anything small enough to swallow. Feeding can be a great opportunity to build trust with your croc monitor. This is really true of most monitors. And do keep in mind that monitors eat a lot. And that also means that they make quite a mess. So expect to spend a lot of time cleaning up messes and in the presence of a pretty dangerous lizard. When it comes to hardiness, we give the croc monitor a score of 3 out of 5. This will improve as these become more available captive bred. Right now, they're mostly imports that suffer from typical import issues, but monitors are a pretty hardy group. Captive bred individuals will not only be hardier, but also probably easier to work with, and that matters when you're basically talking about a tree velociraptor with the teeth of a tiger shark. When it comes to availability, we give the croc monitor a score of 2 out of 5. They are out there. Captive bred are considerably less common, but they're out there. There are breeders that work with them, and they're definitely worth it, so go that route. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the crocodile monitor a score of 1 out of 5. Even an imported giant adult that will want you dead costs thousands of dollars. Captive bred babies will cost much more still, but they're definitely the way to go. And the enclosure is large and spacious. Honestly, even if you're building outdoor enclosures like Tom and Kenan could do, it's still pretty expensive. But if you can't, lighting, UVA and UVB, those are going to be expensive. You're going to need a big water bowl. Uh, maybe not quite like you need for an Asian water monitor, but a pond would be ideal. You're going to need lots of trees and climbing branches, and then buckets of substrate. And this is why overall we give the crocodile monitor a score of 1.6 out of 5, which is a whole point better than children. These monitors are big, expensive, and dangerous. That said, this is sort of the ultimate pet monitor. This is an amazing animal to experience, at least here at Tom's house. However, in reality, this probably is just not the right pet for almost all of us. And that's okay. Get an Aki. But if you just have to have a gloriously beautiful arboreal monitor, then you should probably get a captive bred green tree monitor. Either way, if you're watching this video to determine if a croc monitor is for you, it isn't. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I did have one really terrifying moment, which was uh, we went in, Tom, Tom was showing something that is really cool, which is how much the lizards, uh, you know, croc monitors and others, how well they can distinguish your fingers from food. You know, and he was, he was having croc monitors take food right out of his hands. You know, like you lay it out and they would come and they, they can gently do it. Now, I will mention, he did get his hand bitten a couple years ago and it was, I mean, buckets of stitches, tons of blood loss and, and tendon and nerve damage and all that. So, you know, his, he, he, he knows the risks. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's very, very impressive. But he had somebody handing me feeders and then I, ha I was handing them to Tom. And Tom, after a little bit, stopped feeding him. And so I'm standing there in the enclosure and I'm holding several chicks. But I was behind Tom. I mean, we were all kind of in a line, so I was almost equally close to the croc monitor as Tom was. But Tom couldn't see me. And I knew I was standing there with a few chicks that I didn't want to be standing there with. And I, I knew from the, the body language of the monitor that the monitor was completely aware that I had those chicks. You know, and he was, he, I could see him getting restless and sort of building towards, coming towards me to get those chicks. Right, you know, and ho, ho, you know, I was probably going to toss him and, you know, hope, hope he figured out that I didn't have them anymore. But I don't have the familiarity with those monitors to feel comfortable with that monitor coming lunging at me. Because you know, it was going to come jumping, diving at me. 
And he could tell it was building towards something, but he didn't know what it was. And, you know, and that, I, I kind of spoke up. I'm like, I got to get rid of these chicks, you know, like, like, do you want these? And he's like, oh yeah, you can't have those. I'm like, well, I know, I know I can't have these. <laughs> I want to not have these real bad. <laughs> and, uh, and so anyway, it, it all ended up okay. But that was actually probably, you know, that was right up there at least with when I could tell that Lilith was thinking about turning around. And, and the difference is, if Lilith had turned around, I could have just dropped her and run away. But I don't think I was going to be able to get away from that crack monitor. Uh, I was going to have to hope that he figured out that I abandoned the chicks. Mm. That, I mean, I, you know, that, I, I still get a little anxiety thinking through that, <laughs> that interaction. You know, and like earlier that morning, I held Kilo, the, uh, the monocled cobra. You can die from a monocled cobra bite in under an hour. But, uh, that croc monitor, man. <laughs> and you know, you could just tell he was like, I, I don't know how, how universal of a skill this is, but I can tell when an animal is building, you know, like, like when I hold a snapping turtle, I can tell you right before every time it bites that it's a, it's going to bite now and now and now and now, you know, and like you can, you can feel it, you can see it. it and, and that monitor was preparing to leap at me. It was exciting. He's not, see, he wants, to, he wants to climb on me, is what he wants to do, but his claws hurt so bad. Look at his talons here, look at here. Look at that foot. How big the foot is. It's almost as big as my hand. Now he weighs probably 40 pounds too, at least. He's heavy. Do you want to give him these last two? Come on, buddy. No, you can, yeah, you can't hold those like that. Here, yeah, here, I don't want to. Here, that's what I'm trying to. Oh, oh there you go. Oh. <laughs> that was come on, y'all. Y'all just come on. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. graceful. I could tell he was interested in me and this was supposed to be easy because I wasn't gonna have any creatures, but then I'm like, bring the hacky.